Welcome to another channel update. My name is Nilaus and today I have something different for you than the usual channel update. I usually do these channel updates on a monthly basis where I talk a bit about what I'm going to do, what I have been doing, what's working, what's not working. Today is going to be different. I have one point that I want to make and that is, as the title also hints at, we're going to talk about the content here on my YouTube from on my YouTube channel from the perspective of Let's Plays versus Guides and Tutorials. and. I'm going to just uh, I'm going to structure this talk in a bit of a different way so we find that interesting then also at the end of the video I'll be talking a bit about sort of the structuring of this talk. Anyway, what I want to start with is the main point. So the main point of this talk, the conclusion is that I believe that for my channel it is not as sustainable and as good for the channel to be continuing to put so much focus on let's plays compared to guides and tutorials. Hence, what I think is that I want to be doing more guides and tutorials and less let's play here on the channel. So before you all uh, rage out in the comment section, hear me out. That's the conclusion. We're going to be supporting that with arguments and I will be talking about let's plays, showing you the performance of them using my YouTube analytics. I'll be showing you comparisons to guides and tutorials. Also again, using YouTube analytics so you get a behind the scenes look at this. I'm going to talk a bit about branding. I'm going to talk about live streaming. And by the end of this, hopefully the supporting argument will uh, will also convince you that it's probably the right way to do. And you know, as always, I'm going to do these things, do analysis. I'm going to make some a pivot on my channel and I'm going to try it. And then we'll see if it works uh, over the next couple of months. And uh, if not, then well, We'll just change something else again. So thank you for being on this journey. Let's, uh, uh, let's dive into the actual argumentation. Just before we dive into the first argumentation, maybe you, hopefully you have noticed that I don't do uh, ad integrations on my YouTube videos. I don't do sponsored videos except in very, very uh, uh, rare cases. And that means this channel is uh, sponsored by you, the viewers, basically mainly through Patreon because not really through YouTube ad revenue. So I just want to thank everyone who is supporting the channel on Patreon. It really means a lot and it's the way, the reason why I can choose to say no to sponsorships and ad integrations because I really don't want to do it and I know you don't want to see it either. So thank you to the patrons who are supporting to making, to continue to make that possible. Let's talk about YouTube Let's Plays. Now, um, I'm going to start again with the main point. The main point here is that views for Let's Plays are immediate and there is no sort of long term sustainability and views for Let's Play episodes in general. So that uh, let's let me break that down a bit because it actually comes in two dimensions. One is when I release a video for a YouTube, uh, YouTube Let's Plays, I can see that the majority of my views, maybe like 95% of my views come to the 40, first 48 hours and then that's it. It doesn't get generate any views after a week or a month or anything like that. So there's no long tail for any specific episode. That's one argument. The other one is that if I start a new Let's Play, episode one will be hugely popular and then the interest will drop off. Again, the lack of a long tail. I've made this graph for uh, for my last two Let's Plays and this is basically the, the characteristic of any Let's Play on any YouTube channel around here. Uh, I've checked on Let's Players around uh, on YouTube and this is the pattern that we see, uh, all of us see. So what you're seeing here is that this is uh, on the x-axis, we have the, uh, the episode number and on the y-axis, the number of views. So I took my factorial Let's Play, make a base in a book and I took my Dyson Sphere Program uh, episode uh, Let's Play and then I plotted them here. And you can see a very, very similar pattern that the first one gets an outsized amount of view that's super amazing and then it drops off to about 50% and then drops down again and again and then it sort of reaches a, a consistent level around level around episode 20 and from there on it's never going to spike up never no exception it's not spiking up it'll just be there and it'll just gradually be less and less so that's a that's a really key observation so let's do, let's talk a bit about the the takeaways we can we can come from from me making Let's Plays and how they fit into, uh, into the channel as a whole. From a content creation perspective, Let's Plays have a really big advantage in the sense that it, it allows me as content creator to spend more time on playing and less time on scripting, editing and uh, preparation. So that's good. I, I like playing games. I don't like editing, uh, scripting games, uh, that kind of thing. So I, I literally like to 
focus more on the gaming part. So that's a huge advantage. It also, another thing is that each Let's Play actually basically takes the same amount of time. Of course, you're going to be doing some preparation before the first episode in order to sort of prepare and what's the story going to be like and mods and all that stuff. But once you get started, it basically takes the same amount of time to record, edit, upload, thumbnail, that kind of thing. That's more of a serialized process. So that's good from a consistent production perspective from my perspective. Again, those two arguments are only for me. Um, the other thing is that if I'm, I'm uploading a lot of videos, so from a daily perspective, it's really nice to know that what am I going to do next is also something or it's really laid out because it's going to be the next mission or it's going to be the next step on the tech tree in whatever game we're playing. So progression wise, it's easier to come up with what is the next video going to be about. Those are things that make make it easier for me, but doesn't necessarily make it better. Um, but it does have some some really, really big uh, big issues here that was as we talk about uh, very many of uh, quite a majority of the value comes from the first episode and and since the cost in my time and the preparation and effort is the same for the production that means the value for each episode of a let's play decreases the first one will get 200,000 the second one will get 100,000 and then it'll be 60,000 40,000 30,000 and so on so far until we get to a point where I'm making a video and it takes the same amount as episode two, but I get 10,000 views. And you know, those numbers are, they are proportionally correct, but depending on your size of your YouTube channel, that will differ for you. So again, basically as time goes by, the longer Let's Play runs, the less value I'll get for my time. Of course, by someone seeing episode 32, they might go back and watch episode one, but generally, it's not happening very often and the numbers support that as you can see here uh, so what what we can also see is that in in terms of of continued view people watch a let's play when it's new when it happens when they follow along but very few will actually go back to an old let's play it's true that some will but that's why i'm not saying no one but very few people will and i just had a look at my most popular uh, let's play Vanilla done right uh, and just looked at the very first episode and the number of uh, views in the last 48 hours is 57. So very clearly no one is watching an old let's play. So but then what are they watching? Let's talk about tutorials and guides here on YouTube. So um, I'm going to start again with the main point for this uh, sub chapter here. And the main point is that although guides and tutorials may not perform as well in the first 48 hours, they will continue to generate value for a long time. And my observation is that that long time, that long tail actually has a tremendous amount of value. Um, so that's what we're going to look at. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a comparison between Let's Plays episodes and tutorials for Factorio for Dyson Sphere Program and also take a look at Elden Ring as well to support these arguments. Let's start with Factorio because, well, if you look at this, there are a number of things that are interesting to look at from this graph. Well, first of all, you can see what I mentioned in the previous chapter that views for a Let's Play come incredibly quick. It is goes up immediately and then it basically is a flat curve and you can see in the circled area that I'm really not getting a lot of views after about a month of a of a let's play episode. I took one that was pretty popular but basically it is it's stalling. I'll get the views I get and I will never get any more views. That means in order for me to gain views on my channel I have to output new let's play episode all the time because there will not be this long tail. Now comparatively I'm going to of course take the most successful factorial uh, tutorial to date but it is there because I want to illustrate how outsized of a success that is. The, the main one is, of course, audio based with main bus. And uh, you can see that every single day, there's, or it's actually every, every 48 hours, there's about 1300 people still watching that video. Also another thing, a lot of people watch this video more than once, but I don't think anyone is gonna watch a Let's Play more than once. So that's another thing that is, uh, that is of incredible value to me is that I, uh, I can see that even years later, because this is years later, two years ago, this video was there, I'm still generating views on this. And of course, since I'm showing, showing you this, you can also see that the monetary side of things is quite different. The fact that I can still make money on an old video, it's really, really impressive. Now, also, if we look at it from that perspective, yes, it of course took more time to make that audio base with main bus compared to making a random Let's Play episode. 
and not every tutorial will be as successful. But I think the potential here, there is no way that a, a Let's Play episode 37 or 72 will ever be a success. It doesn't have a potential for search or virality, but a tutorial has the potential to be the guide for trains, main bus, city blocks, whatever it is. And that is incredible upside. And the downside is that, yes, it takes more time and you've got to be hitting it both in terms of, of thumbnails and uh, um, titles, but obviously also about the actual content in and of itself. Uh, so let, that was for Factorio, but it's not exact, it's, it's not unique to Factorio. If we look at it for Dyson Sphere Program, we can see exactly the same as well. Here, of course, Dyson Sphere Program does not have the same uh, lively community. So views for an old guy that's more than a year old is not very impressive. But yet it still shows very much the same that I'm for a Let's Play episode. It the, the views come immediately and then sort of taper off. But for a guide, even a guide that is by all accounts completely outdated now because now there are proliferators. So things uh, these standard builds are actually different now. Even then, if that's the case, then it still has generated more value over time. And the, the view graph is sort of a, a line instead of sort of a, a flat a curve that flattens. So again, my argument here is that it generates more long-term value by making tutorials than doing Let's Plays. And I just wanted to, the last example, I was, when Elden Ring came out and I really loved that game, I was just contemplating what am I going to do in terms of content creation for this game. And I decided to keep Let's Play part over on Twitch. So it was only for live streaming because then we also get the reactions, the response, the interaction, the guides, the helping, all that stuff, the backseating, the if, if I wanted that. I get that there. And then I decided only to do guides here on YouTube. And Here's a, an example, and that is, it's blowing me away how effective that is. What I want you to take away from this is, this is a simple guide. Now there's very big discrepancy on these guides, but this is one of the good ones. Some of them I have completely tanked, and I, I haven't really figured out why, but this one is good. This one really hit the, the, the spot. And you can see here 1,400 new subscribers just from this video alone. It is amazing. And it's a game that is very much outside of my normal domain of factory games. So this is a huge success for me in order to make these. And yes, it took some time to make it, but maybe it took like a day's worth of time. But it's certainly a lot more value from this than making episodes 27, 28, 29 and 30 going through Rhea Lucaria because they would not be generating the amount of views and particularly would not be generating the amount of subscribers that this video by itself has done. And there are more of these videos that have also been really successful, but I wanted to highlight this one because it, it just shows the case. So that will just show you how valuable tutorials are, not just in, in generating views over a long time, but also attracting a new audience. There's no way that a Let's Play with episodes 27 to 30 would generate this amount of new subscribers. So that's uh, that's when it comes to, to tutorials. The next sub point I want to, uh, to talk about is branding. And uh, this is coming from something that came up completely random. And my main point here is I am the tutorial. That's my main point for this segment. And I'm just going to be talking a bit about it. I was playing, doing a Let's Play for Dyson's program and the tutorial popped up and I clicked it away and I was like, no, 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 no. Here I am doing a tutorial. No, go away, build in tutorial. I am the tutorial. And people picked up on it in, uh, in, in, in the comment section and I've sort of embraced that. And I really love that uh, meme that it was, no, I'm the tutorial. And you know, it's a much better brand than I am the Let's Play. And I think there are lots of Let's Players around here, but if I want to build a brand of, of just being able to make really good tutorials, because I also think something I think that fits to me, that finding out sort of the, the optimal way of doing things and then explaining it, that's something that's much better for me uh, personally compared to when we talk about Let's Plays, then I think that when I watch Let's Plays, there are also some people who just make it funny or silly or really get embedded in the story. And I, I'm just not that kind of a storyteller. I'm more of a, a teacher and instructor and engineer than I am the storyteller. So I think that for a game like Elden Ring, in, in order to make a really good, let's, really good and compelling Let's Play, you have to be really 
uh, a good storyteller at the same time and dive into the lore and and you know or just make it really silly and editing and that kind of thing and that, that's just not me in in terms of that kind of let's play so i think from a branding perspective as well i that came out randomly that i am the tutorial but uh, i i'm embracing that i like that and therefore i also want to 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 lean into that and uh, make more tutorials and guides for for upcoming games and that's 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 basically the essence of it it came out came out a bit randomly but um you know seize upon it and uh, work on it i mean the sacred path was also a random youtube comment so they're uh they're, they're pretty damn good those uh those youtube comments so keep them coming the next point we are going to talk about is live streaming and how that fits into the picture. We are again going to start with the main point. The main point is, for me, is that long form content such as Let's Plays just fit better with a live streaming, uh, live streaming experience. And I'm going to support that with arguments, so hold on on your comments for just a bit. First. I'm just going to mention, if you don't know, if you're only following me here on YouTube, if you, uh, maybe you don't know, but I am also streaming on Twitch. It is at twitch.tv slash Nilos, and it's at pretty much every day, at least six days a week at 8 p.m. Central European time. Uh, so do come on over. Most of the people who are watching on live stream, on the live streams, actually came over from, from YouTube based on me calling it out. Um, and a lot of people hang out there because that's a different experience. It's, it's much more personal, it's much less scripted, and it's much more conversational. Um, and of course, if you can't attend because of time zones or availability or anything like that, you can also find my VODs for the live streams. They are on either on Twitch, and after about a week or so, I move them over to YouTube, my secondary YouTube channel called Nilos TV. And um, then you can watch them there at your own leisure, both zoom back, fast forward, whatever you want to want to do. So with the argument that uh, I think that long form content is better for Twitch. Well, let's say something like Elden Ring. Elden Ring is a good example because I recently completed it. I streamed it for about 150 hours, I think in total. That was the amount of time in game that I uh, that I had for this character going all the way through. So let's say about 150 hours. Let's take that as a YouTube Let's Play. That would be of half hour episodes. That would be 300 episodes. That doesn't fit now, does it? There's no way that I'm going to make 300 episodes of on YouTube. And of course, I would play it and then make it more sort of edited and uh, crisp experience here on YouTube. But still, it's very hard to see Let's Play of all of Elden Ring going on YouTube as less than, I don't know, 70 episodes. I think that's what the walkthrough guide for, for Fighting Cowboy is, something like that. It's, it's an absolutely insane amount. And we have already talked about uh, and I have illustrated to you how well in it, how well a Let's Play performs once you get beyond the first couple of episodes. So that would mean, since it's not even my core audience, I would have to put out two, three Elden Ring videos every day up to now to even be done with it. And that would just be a lot of clutter on my main YouTube channel for one game. And that just doesn't fit. So. That's the, that's the power. Another thing that we saw that for Let's Plays is that it drops really quickly and then once it reaches that level. That's also the case for Twitch, but that level does not decrease further. It's not like it, it goes to 150 re uh, viewers and then goes continue down. No, it goes down to a certain level and it for Elden Ring it was about 150 concurrent viewers, which is not enough basically to be running a live stream but it's it's fun and it's a game i absolutely love so i was continuing to play it and at that level we had a good conversation we had good uh, help there's a good backseating going on if, if needed need be and we could do conversational and there's also the immediate response to me doing some stupid things which is just so much more fun when you have a camera on and you can talk to the audience about the stupidity and uh, and and yeah, and whatever happens as, as part of that. So that long form would be too much to put on YouTube, but it fits quite well on Twitch. And of course, there are some people who will immediately comment, I hate Twitch. That's fine. But I got to do what I got to do. And I could not put it on YouTube, but there was absolutely no way I was not going to play Elden Ring because it's the best game ever made, probably. So of course I had to play it. And I felt that the way I chose to do it by doing a live stream where I explored and, and tried and tested all that these stuff. And then I could make guides more structured here on YouTube. And I thought that actually worked really well. And that's something I'm going to be continuing with because those things complement each other, the long form content, and then the more scripted replayed essences, uh, essential parts here on YouTube, uh, trying to work to the strength of each of the medium instead of sort of bending it to your will. 
And that brings us to the end of my presentation. I uh, hope that you liked it. And maybe if you are in the corporate uh, environment, in a management consulting environment, you would recognize that I have structured this talk according to the pyramid principles. It is pretty much the only way to do presentations for executive management. So I thought I would also leave a little, um, little extra thing in here for for anyone who is doing a presentations so it the way that it works is that just very briefly is that you start with the main point the conclusion and then you break down that into sub points and for each sub point you have a main conclusion and you support it with arguments and data and uh, insights to build up to the conclusion that you already have presented it makes people listen more because they don't they're not going to sit in second guess what conclusion are you going to lead me to, but you're going to get this is the statement and then you're going to support the statement with arguments. And I hope this was uh, also insightful. Uh, let me know how it worked, whether you like this way of presentation. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be doing it again, because honestly, I don't do a lot of these kind of presentations that would fit to this format. Um, but I thought it was uh, would it be appropriate in this case. Also kind of a fun thing to do a, a throwback to the corporate days of doing uh, doing presentations. Anyway, that is going to be it for this one. I have a lot of games upcoming as well. But basically, the next things that are coming is Captain of Industry by the end of June, uh, end of May. And we have a Satisfactory Update 6 in the beginning of June. And we have a few other things on the, on the agenda as well. And then we'll basically be picking up games as they come along. I've had a lot of fun with Terraformers, with uh, Dune Spice Wars and Chaos Gate. And I want to do more for these kind of games that sort of come up and then do sort of, they're not going to be like massive games like Factorio, but it's going to be something we can enjoy for a month or so and then move on to the next thing. There's also a Rift Breaker uh, DLC coming as well. So maybe there's, there's going to be some content for that as well. And of course, if you have ideas for other content that I'm missing, new games, not old games, but upcoming games that uh, that look interesting and look like something you'd like me to take a look at from a, either Let's Play on a on the live stream or tutorials and guides and introductions here on, the, on YouTube, then let me know in the comment section below. Thank you very much, everyone, for following and supporting and subscribing. And of course, the biggest thanks goes out to the patrons who are supporting monetarily and make sure that I can continue to do this uh, in the way that I do it now. So thank you very much, everyone. Until next time, take care and stay effective.